Hi there, this is Phil Pendlebury. I'm in Cubase 10.5 here, and I'm going to show you three little Waves Q-Clone tricks that you might find interesting. So, Q-Clone, as you can see here, it's uh, often overlooked and treated like a kind of mystic tool that no one uses. Pretty old now, but still has some very interesting qualities. Um, the idea of Q-Clone is to use it to copy EQ curves from various devices and used a lot on hardware originally. But you can use it on plugins too. And uh, I'm going to show you three of my little favorite tricks. Now, I'm using Cubase, so your procedure might be slightly different. Well, the first thing is we need to get this signal into our plugins. Now, normally what you have to do is, you, as you can see, this Q clone capture or the Q capture is sending out signal. I'll uh, let you hear it. So basically what that is, is a sweep from a very low frequency to a high frequency. And that's going to be sent into the plugin or into the hardware that you're using. And then it comes back, and that's why it's saying waiting here. It will tell you the, uh, the differences on, on the Q-Clone uh, device itself. The problem a lot of people have, including me, and this is why I gave up with it a long time ago, was getting that signal into there. I found a very easy way to do it, which is by just capturing the actual audio. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to do that. I've already got one done, but let's do a new one. So I've made a track here. It's an audio, mono audio track. So I'm going to bring up the desk. Okay, so I'm going to take over the Q Capture plugin and just chuck it on there. You can only have, let's just mute that for a second. You can only have one instance of this plugin running at one time because obviously it's sending a signal which is being read by the Q clone itself. So I've moved the Q Capture plugin onto a mono audio track and muted it. Otherwise, you're going to hear this, which we don't want. The next step is to render that. Make an audio blank audio file there. There's nothing in it. Um, that's what we want to hear. Now you could render this out any way you want. I choose to do it using render in place. So we're going to open the sound. I'm just going to set up the render and make sure that it includes channel settings. Because if you do it dry, then you won't get the plugin sound. So including channel settings and then we'll render. I'll mute both. That's the source that I've muted there. And there is our rendered audio. Okay. And as you can see, there's the rendered audio. If you want to look at it inside a part, maybe there's the actual file. Now, I did consider actually putting this audio file up for download to make it a lot easier for people, but there's too many factors involved. Um, one of them being, you know, what sample rate you're using and so on and so forth. I'm not sure how much difference that would make, but I'm sure it would make some difference. And on top of that, I'm sure that there's some kind of copyright probably involved. So I didn't feel comfortable doing that. But I think it's very simple. You just need to record that sound into a single, simple mono audio file. Okay. Okay. So with that done, I'm going to delete these um, tracks that I use for the demonstration. And I'm going to move you capture back over to something that I've already got set up. So there's our captured audio, as I've just explained. So very simple, back to the mixer. And you can see I've got Q capture right at the end of a chain of other plugins, which are all for use in this demo. And also what we need to do is insert the actual Q clone plugin into another audio track. I've done there. Uh, that's actually a stereo track. Again, doesn't really matter for this purpose. And there's the Q clone itself. Now, don't forget, you can only use one Q clone at a time, one capture at a time. So if I now play the audio that I've recorded, Q clone thinks that it's receiving what's being transmitted. You can see that the um, input and output are nicely balanced. That's exactly what we want. So good. All right. So we'll leave that running, even though um, it is muted. Uh, it's still receiving the signal, which is great. So we're not going to have to hear that. So bring the mixer back. 
and off we go. Let's move. The first thing to do is we set the Qclone plugin itself to capture. And then we're going to start a plugin. So I thought as a nice little demo as to how it works, I'll bring up one of Waves' one knob plugins. So here is the one knob filter. Now these are all inserted. These are um, bypass the other plugins that are part of the demo. Q capture plugin is right at the end of the chain, and one knob is before the Q capture plugin. Simple as that. And you'll see that as we move, you can see exactly what's going on, what that plugin is doing. To the EQ curve. Now, don't forget, there's no dynamics or anything else here included. This is literally just EQ. So we can actually move that around. We okay, we can change the resonance to extreme. You can see there's a, all sorts of odd things happening there. No resonance, moderate resonance, and you can see that's what's going on. Um, the other thing here is to watch out for the headroom. Um, as long as the basic signal is still around the center there, I find it to be acceptable. So there we are. We can see as the filter goes right down, you can see the signal. So that's interesting because it gives you a chance to see what some of your plugins are actually doing visually that you wouldn't normally see. For example, the one knob filter. Now we all know what a filter does, uh, but sometimes it's interesting to see. I never particularly liked the sound of that extreme resonance and now I know why because it is really extreme uh, with no resonance at all there is still a little bit of resonance there as you can see it so I found that interesting the other thing I found interesting just to prove that it's doing its job was my tone boosters Morphit which is what I use to um, equalize the headphones when I'm uh, mixing with headphones now you can see the EQ curve there that is being produced to um, equalize my headphones to, to how I like them. Anyway, that's another another video. Um, and if I turn that on, you can actually see that Qclone's picking it up really nicely. Uh, so the scale is slightly different, but yeah, you know, it's picking that up really accurately. Pull in a couple of others, you can see the same thing, which is pretty neat. In this case, obviously, you can see the curve, so this isn't really giving us any benefits, but it is showing that it's working and what it's doing. Let's move on to the intended purpose of Qclone, which is to capture those exact EQ. So I'm going to bring up one of my UAD plugins, and this is the distressor. Now, obviously, the distressor is mainly meant the gain reduction and compression. Um, it does all sorts of things, but I just thought it'd be interesting to show what the distressor does to the EQ curve. So first thing I'm going to do is, like I said before, if there's an output on the machine itself, on the plugin itself, if there's an output on the plugin itself, I'm going to adjust it until it's approximate zero or on that center line. You can do that also with the headroom control here. Even in a kind of pretty, um, what should I say, generic form, there is still some EQ going on. Even, you know, there's still a little bit of bottom end being pushed up there. And as, once we start messing around with the detector, you see all sorts of things going on. And many of us have no idea, you know, what was being caused. Look, look at the uh, bottom shelf there. It's fantastic. So, okay. So let's say that you've always said, I really like the sound of the distressor. Okay, so let's say I want to capture that. I'm just going to adjust the volume to how I like it. And I'm simply going to go save. Let's put it into the menu. Put it into the menu as fill distress. And there we have it. So now, at a later date, I could I could bring up the Qclone plugin. Okay, let's just clear that off. And then I could say, okay, I liked that EQ curve. I'm going to pull that in. And there it is. That's the exact curve. So that's the basics. Now, 
let's try it with a couple of others. Don't forget, go back into capture mode. I've got the Portek here, the UAD Portek, another one of my favorites. And you can see straight away what's going on. I particularly like the, um, the bottom end trick that's used with the Portek, which is to boost the low end, but also to cut it. And again, you can see exactly how that's working. You can set it up. You can actually have an audio track playing through the uh, Q-Clone itself while this is going on. But I figured with this, it'd be just easy enough to show the principle. So there we are. We've set up the pull tech how we like it. And so you go to save and you would just put that into the preset menu. Pull tech. So that pretty much sums that up. Um, one last one um, would be the J37. Again, the tape does all sorts of other things, but the EQ is something that a lot of people like, as you can see. Quite a distinctive little EQ curve. That's at 15 IPS. And as we change the formula or the tape style, see the EQ curve changing. If we go to 7.5, you can see there's a big drop off on the top end, which is all to be expected. So you would set that to how you like it. And you would save it put into preset menu. And I think I've got one that I did earlier on this one. Yeah, there you go. So that's that. The only other thing really to point out is that you can use this for a chain, which was something that I thought was quite neat. So forget the filters and forget morph it. Okay, got my distressor on. Let's just reset that back to a basic. Capture. So with that little bit of bottom end, volume levels are all right. After that, we've got the pull tech with the low end trick, and then J thirty seven tape. So this is all three of those plugins in a chain, and that is the resulting EQ curve. And we'll save it. Put it into preset menu, fill, and that's the EQ curve from those three plugins in that particular state, which can then be applied to music. So there you go. That's basically, I hope it wasn't too long winded, but I like to go into a little bit of detail when I can. That's basically three little tricks that you can do with Waves Q Clone. So one is to see what your actual um, plugins are doing or should I say the EQ side of the plugins. One is to replicate the EQ of a single plugin, and one is to replicate the EQ of a group of plugins like I just showed you at the end there. So there we are in Cubase, and I uh, hope that made some sense, and I hope it helped some of you. See you all again soon. Cheers for now.